It's not easy to predict the future. According to many psychics, the world was supposed to end in the year 2000, but nothing happened. Their next prediction was that the world was to end in the year 2012, but again, nothing happened. Times Magazine reports that only six out of 250 psychic predictions actually happen. That's only a 3% success rate. So is there any source that has a better success rate than 3%? If you're going to believe a prediction about the future, there are two things the source would need if you were going to trust it. Number one, you'd need historical accuracy. Meaning, it presents the facts it mentions accurately. It's not founded on myths and legends and fairy tales. And secondly, you'd need a proven track record of fulfilled predictions, a very high predictive batting average. Now, some say that the Bible is a trustworthy source and that this can be confirmed through its predictions about ancient Medo-Persia. So let's give it a test. Is the Bible historically accurate in what it records about the Medo-Persians? The Bible mentions a number of the kings from Medo-Persia. For example, Darius the Great is mentioned numerous times in the books of Ezra and Haggai and Zechariah. Now, this is the same Darius who's seen on the Behistun inscription right here with his foot on the chest of one of his enemies. Then there's Xerxes, known as Ahasuerus in the Bible. That's the husband of Queen Esther the Jew. Now, Xerxes is pictured here in the ruins of Persepolis in Iran. It's the same king who invaded Greece, fought Leonidas and his Spartan warriors, and was defeated at the naval battle of Salamis. Then there's Artaxerxes I, that's the son of Xerxes. He's also mentioned in the book of Ezra. This guy made a decree in his seventh year, that's 457 BC, to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Now Artaxerxes I's name is actually inscribed around the edge of this silver bowl, which is housed in the British Museum today. However, perhaps one of the most famous examples of the Bible's historical accuracy is connected to Cyrus the Great. Now, the book of Ezra in chapter 1 records that King Cyrus allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem and to rebuild their temple, all of which is confirmed by the famous Cyrus cylinder that's found in the British Museum today. This cylinder records that Cyrus took Babylon and allowed the captives of Babylon to return to their homelands and then restore their temples. Now, this same Cyrus cylinder illustrates the Bible has a proven track record of fulfilled predictions. It's one of the most amazing predictions you'll ever read. Around 690 BC, the prophet Isaiah predicted that a man called Cyrus would order the rebuilding of Jerusalem and its temple. Now, notice what Isaiah predicted some 150 years before the events and 100 years before Cyrus was even born who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. So where does a person get their information to predict the future so precisely? Here we are, not only told what someone will do in 150 years time, but even call the person by name and get it right. The answer to that question is the very reason why this prophecy was given. Notice what the prophet Isaiah wrote concerning his prediction about Cyrus. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, that's Cyrus, the man that executes my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. The biblical source for the prophet was God himself, you see. It's little wonder some try to say parts of the book of Isaiah were written two centuries later. If you don't believe the future can be predicted, then what else can you do with such a specific prophecy like this? In fact, this book informs us that God makes predictions so that we can not only prepare for the future, but also so that we can believe there is a God and we can put our trust in Him. Notice what Jesus said about predictions. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Why not check out more incredible prophecies from our free online course, Digging Up the Future? 
They're devoted to the prophecies of the Bible, including its prophecies that reveal what's about to happen in our world. Just visit our website and learn more in our free Digging Up the Future course today.